Hey up. So you remember how bad last episode's film was? Well somehow, this one manages to be even worse. So bad in fact that I'd say this is the second worst film of the Vipco collection so far. Driving Massacre still holds that number one spot for me though. The Dungeon, otherwise known as Dr. Jekyll's Dungeon of Death, is a 1979, or 1982 if you believe this disc, American horror film, directed by, produced by, co-written by, and edited by, James Wood. No, not that James Woods, unfortunately. James Wood Singular, who has only done this and directed two other porn films, and it's co-written and starring a fellow called James Mathers. It's a slow and boring mad scientist film that just feels like a big old waste of time. Ah, the past, yes. Arrival can only mean that I am finally on the verge of the breakthrough. We follow Dr. Jekyll, who is the great grandson of the Dr. Jekyll, the fictional character, and he's made some sort of serum that sends people into a blind rage and is experimenting on people. He's also kidnapped a woman who used to be his assistant and he's got some sort of thing for her and his old professor is staying around at his and he turns out to be the father of the girl who's been kidnapped. They just doss about, chatting for an hour and a half, some people die and then the film ends. The film mainly consists of Dr. Jekyll explaining his experiments to the professor or watching his experiments fly. Now this is where the film gets a little bit weird because there's a lot of martial arts fights in this film. Uh, I counted five in total, and the film comes to a screeching halt to show you these fight sequences, which do seem like a really strange fit for a film like this. Uh, in total, the total runtime of all the fights is 22 minutes, which is a third of the film, and nothing else is happening while these fights are on. Now, I like a good martial arts fight sequence, but they're generally only good to watch when there's stakes, when you know the characters who are involved in the fight and there's a purpose for it. But these are just random experiment people who come in and fight for a bit. And it just makes them a pain to watch. Let's talk about these characters. So his main character is Dr. Jekyll, played by James Mathers, and he doesn't shut up throughout the entire film. Now his acting isn't the worst, but with his endless pontificating and scenery chewing, he gets really great in really fast. And then there's the professor. Now this guy is appalling. His acting is by far the worst in the whole film, and he's got a big part. But it's so bad that it's very entertaining to watch. He never changes the inflection in his voice at all, and he's constantly looking either shocked or completely lost. No idea why they hired him, but I'm glad they did. It made it ever so slightly more watchable. And then there's the side characters. Now, there are a lot of side characters in this, but the main one to really mention, I think, is Dr. Jekyll's lobotomized sister, who pops up every now and then with a big wide-eyed gormless expression, and it made me chuckle a few times. Outside of that though, their character's completely pointless, as are most of the side characters in this. Great Scott Jekyll, he was come loud at Oxford Medical the year you were expelled. My expertise is involved in the behavior of human beings at their destruction. So there are two scenes that are mentioned on the back of the case that I feel are worth bringing up here. So firstly, in the hour verdict bit, it keeps banging on about this ice scene. 
And it is a pretty weird scene. So basically Dr. Jekyll goes a bit crazy, starts stabbing some ice while shouting ice. And while it is amusing, it is nowhere near as entertaining as the back of the case will have you believe. And secondly, there's the scalding water scene, which it does mention here. So I thought it was going to be like a big thing. I was looking forward to maybe some good effects or something like that. But it is pathetic. It basically just boils down, boils down, to um, Dr. Jekyll just dribbling some scalding water on his sister from a kettle. And it's brief, it, you can't really see anything, and then in the next scene, she's back to normal as if nothing happened. Completely pointless. Don't know why they brought it up on the case. Overall, with this film really, anything that's gore or effects related is either terrible or non-existent. I guess they spent all the money on the fight sequences. I said ice. You do know what ice is, don't you? I do. This is ice. Ice! 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 Time to take a look at this print, I think. It's pretty terrible, really. It's in 4x3 aspect ratio, and it's even slightly off-center in that. It looks like the film was shot on some really mucky film stock, and this copy is also a VHS rip on top with some pretty big flickers at one point. All the darks blend together and make it look like it was shot in some grey mud, which makes it really dull and unappealing. And let's see what's on the disc. Nothing new again. All four trailers repeated, uh, chapter select, filmographies, which is a minute little section, and another really strange stills section with a really strange template of Dr. Jekyll pulling a stupid face. Disorientation? Paranoia. And let's check out this case. It really bigs this one up. It even has an hour verdict section saying how much fun it was watching it in a specific cinema. It seems strange and kind of reminds me of the back of Ghost House with all the opinions and such. There's a grammar error, a really weird spelling of enough, not sure if it's a reference to something, I don't know. And loads of quotes from the film for seemingly no reason. Just overall, a very weird blurb. But the info is all correct outside of the hyperbole. Overall then, this was a slog to sit through. I was checking out by the 40 minute mark and those fight scenes just killed any pacing that this film could have had. If you want a good mad scientist film with some amazing effects and a really fun plot, then just check out the reanimator instead. If for some reason you do want to see this and you want a Blu-ray of it, then I'm afraid you're out of luck. This is your lot for the UK. So. We're not doing very well this half, are we really? Two films down and both of them have been appalling. But I know for a fact that that's going to change next week. Because we're checking out one of my favourite zombie films of all time. The Zombie Dead. And it's redundant title. <laughs>